<laughs> it's a Monday and of course it's all about fashion right here. When we talk about the big interview, we talk about people who are changing the narratives and the society. This lady is actually changing the narrative and the fashion world. I love her so much. I've seen her pieces. They are not just made locally but internationally as well. People out there love her work. I'm talking about the lady herself, Alima Bello. Hello darling. Hello. How are you? I'm well, thank you. It's good to have you here. It's good to be here. Great. So Alima Bello is the creative director and also the co-founder of Bello Edu. Now, when I heard of Bello Edu, every time I hear, I'm like, okay, Bello, yes, but Edu, where's the Edu coming from? Okay, so just to give you a brief, I'm the founder. Okay. When I started, Bello Edu was founded in 2014. And prior to that, I had a partner. And she was also half Nigerian, half Ghanaian like myself. Okay. And her surname is Edu. So we merged our two names and hence Bello Edu. Okay. But um, she decided to pursue other things and um, we had to separate ways. But mm -hmm. then I maintained the name. So mm -hmm. that's why the name is Bello Edu. Okay, now we understand. <laughs> Bello But it's a beautiful name. Thank it's you. It's taking you far. Thank you. Yes. I didn't know that, but thank you. It has taken you far. You have beautiful pieces. Let's talk about how you got into the world of fashion. But before we talk about mm -hmm. that, and I know that's what everybody's waiting for, people want to know your background. Tell us a bit about yourself, Alima. Oh, right. Where do I begin? I'm, I'm a first-born child. <laughs> I'm a first-born child, yeah. born and raised in Kumasi. My father is Yoruba and my mom's Fanti. Um, growing up, I don't think I ever thought about fashion. Um, and it never crossed my mind. Okay. As a first-born child, I was actually, let's just say, I was prepped to think I had to go to school, get a degree, come back and work in my father's business as a first-born child, naturally. Mm -hmm. So I went to school, did business in Holy Child, then majored in insurance, University of Ghana, did my national service. I didn't even get to complete my national service and I had to go into my father's factory to work for him. So fashion was the last thing on mm -hmm. my mind. Mm -hmm. But then funnily enough, it was during that period that that interest was born. Because as you know, when we're in uni, vacation time, mm -hmm. we, we find an excuse to travel. Yes, so to we go come do back any work. Any, any <laughs> And then you come back with clothes. Right. But then after school, my father's like, okay, so you're done now. You're a full-blown adult. Now you're working. If you want to travel, you have to buy your own ticket. Uh -huh. And I think it was during that period that it was a long period that I hadn't been outside of Ghana. And living in Kumase, yes, there were clothes, there were fashionable clothes, but you couldn't find maybe what you liked in the color or your size. So I started following my mom to her seamstress in Asukwa. And I would go with and get some pieces done. And sister, yeah, I'll be like, Alima, oh, hami. <laughs> <laughs> so it was during that period. And then slowly, I think in 2008, when um, African fashion was on the rise, especially in Nigeria and, and in South Africa, mm -hmm. then it dawned on me that it can actually be a business. Because before, I had never thought of it as a business, especially right. from Africa. Mm -hmm. But then in Nigeria, there were brands showing up. There were retailers popping up. And even in Ghana, certain brands had also come up. And I said, okay, all right, so I think we can do this. Mm -hmm. And then the fear was, how do I convince my dad that I want to pursue my own dream mm -hmm. and, and quit working for him in his factory that all his life, he's just been waiting for me to finish school to come and work. It took me two and a half years to convince him, not because it was difficult, but because I felt guilty. Mm. I felt like I was giving up on him and what he had planned for my life. So it took me about two and a half years just to, you know, take that bull step and then move out of Kumasi, come to Accra. And, and that's how the journey began. And that's how it began. So now, looking at the, 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 the monetary aspect, mm -hmm. you know, of course, with working with your dad, it was paying a lot. Now, you were delving into the fashion industry that you didn't know if it was going to pay or not. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to take this risk? I think with any, with any passion, I don't think money is ever the motivation. Money wasn't the motivation, it was, just, uh, it was just the ability to wake up and do what I like. Um, it was never about money. Well, money is nice, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Having money is nice. It but is nice. It's very nice. Gosh. Yes. yes. <laughs> but then that wasn't the motivation. So, and that's what kept me, kept me going and still keeps me going. Mm. It wasn't about money. It was a passion. Yes. So how was your father's reaction when you told him that you were going to pursue on this journey? He was extremely supportive. My father's been an entrepreneur, I think, his whole life, so he understands it. Mm -hmm. Yes, was he disappointed that I was leaving his factory to pursue something on my own? He was. But then he was also excited to see, 
to see me get up and do something, start something for myself. And he's still my biggest supporter. So in the, like, you know, as an entrepreneurial journey, there are ups and downs. When, the, when there are the down moments, he's the first to pick up the phone and call mm. and be like, you know, keep at it. Don't give up. Whenever he's in Accra, my father comes to the studio every morning for coffee. So he's extremely supportive, and so is the rest of my family. That's great to hear. Now, when you moved to Accra, mm -hmm. how did it how all start for you in Accra? I mean, you moved mm -hmm. to, to a place where you've never lived. You, were, yeah. you, you spent all your life in Kumasi. Yes. So it was like a new life for you. It was. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was, <clears throat> I was in Legon for four years, but it wasn't the same as living in Accra. Exactly. So how was it? Let me see. I first got a job in a furniture company because I couldn't find any fashion company to work with. Okay. And I just, I also love furniture. So I want anything that would expose me to the design world where you're interacting with people, like, you know, producing stuff for people. I worked in a furniture company for about two months and then I quit. And then I worked in an ad agency as admin support, and then, which was excellent for me at mm -hmm. that time because it gave me the time to then start pursuing lessons. So I signed up for pattern drafting lessons for six months. I okay. would go in the afternoons, work in the mornings, and then go back to the office. And, um, and that's how it started. So the ad agency also opened my eyes as to, you know, communication, marketing. And when I knew I wanted to do this professionally, mm -hmm. I wasn't quick, to, I, w I wasn't too keen to get popular. I wanted to do okay. the work, mm. understanding who you're designing for, how to communicate to the person you're designing for. It took time, but then these were all, looking back, you realize these were all things that were, you know, coming together to, to right. help and, and shape my mind right. and get me ready for this. And, and you have been fantastic, I must say. Thank the, you. The, the whole sustainability plan you have to break it down for us okay. before you leave but then again you know when you started now you went into the world of fashion mm -hmm. and you brought out your first piece tell us about how the whole first piece your first collection <laughs> came about and then you tell us more about you know all the collections because i know you make a lot of you know flowy gowns yes yes i like to feel very comfortable uh -huh. and i like to think the below do one wants to feel comfortable so my first collection is actually a blur first collection came out in 2014 I remember I showcased, there was a, a bar, a lounge in Cantonments. It was a very relaxed evening of family and friends. And um, yeah, it, was a, it went well, the showcase went well. I remember I even had a friend who did makeup for free. Um, I had beautiful models who came in for next to nothing. So yeah, those were the innocent days. It was, it was nice and um, was it a learning curve? Yes. Everything was a learning curve at mm. that point. Um, I think it threw me into how to put together a fashion show. So anybody who knows my brand knows we, we don't particularly do a lot of events. We like to curate and take creative control mm -hmm. because it's, a, it's part of the whole story. Everything ties down to the music, to how the models come out, to how we describe the pieces. I think coming out with the first collection was... Um, was such an um, insightful moment for me in learning to do things the right way. Mm. Now, when you were putting together a collection, mm -hmm. what inspires you? See, that's a very vague question <laughs> that I always try to <laughs> run away from. I think I take inspiration from every day. Okay. So sometimes, it could even be what you're wearing today. Mm. I'm like, oh, I like the color, and then it stays in my head. So when I go back, I will sketch or I'll write down I'm always taking notes and sketching. Mm. And at some point, if I get the time, I have a pattern cutter. Okay, let's do this pattern. Let's put together this style. Let's see if it works. Would it work with this fabric? Would that work with that fabric? And then when it's time to do the collection, which we do twice a year, mm -hmm. we do one March and April, and then another one September, October. So I line up all, say, let's say all the things I've been inspired by. I line them up. Okay, we can put this one together, can put this one together, take this one out. No, this one's not good. No, this fabric is bad. Let's find another. So it's like that. I don't have, it is never far removed from me. I can't come back and tell you I went on a trip mm -hmm. or I saw a mountain or a poem and it inspired me, if you know what I mean. It's everyday styles and silhouettes that I know um, the Belodu woman likes or what I feel like, okay, this could work. Um, this could transcend from office to dinner. Mm. or to a wedding reception or to an outdooring. So it's just everyday life. Right. You keep talking about the Belo Edu woman. Yes. What's your definition of a Belo Edu woman? Belo Edu woman, she is aged between 25 and 45. 
mid age 33, lives in a cosmopolitan city. Um, she's a go getter, she knows what she wants. Um, let's say she earns maybe, I can actually say she earns maybe about 3,000 CDs and above a month. Um, she likes to invest in pieces. She's very smart mm. about her purchases. So she would buy a smart piece, something from, from us, and mix it with other basic stuff that she has because we actually believe in mixing stuff in your wardrobe. Mm. I don't believe in cleansing out your wardrobe for every single event all the time. Right. And that's exactly how the Bolodu woman shops. So she would buy a skirt from Bolodu. She would wear it with a T-shirt or wear it with a shirt that she bought from somewhere else. Right. Or she would buy a dress from us as a wedding guest and in six months, she'll put it on again. Um, what are her interests? She likes to dine with her friends. She likes to have a good time. She likes to travel when she can. She likes to invest in smart pieces, maybe one good mm -hmm. bag, one good shoe. Um, and she's confident. Is and she happy. very colorful? Because I, I think most of your colors are, you know, not, you're, not, like, you're not too out there with your colors. Why so? Um, we leave that to the woman. <laughs> We leave that to the woman because um, we want our pieces to serve as canvases. Mm. So you could take a black piece and then you could make your black dress as colorful as you want, put on accessories, let your personality do the, you know, talking. Do the talking. Right. So that's, we serve as a canvas. Okay. We don't want you to put on Belodu and just be, you know, we're just there to support. Right. So what's it with the flowy gowns? Is there an inspiration behind that one as well? Hmm. It's, it's, it's usually what I'm feeling yeah. at the moment. Um, Flowy gowns because I like to be comfortable and I like dresses that have pockets. Okay. Um, it's just as being functional and practical because you're walking around, you have things you want. Or sometimes you just want somewhere to, you know, put your arms, your hands and be comfortable. So the flowy gowns allows us to do that. And also, like I said, it's just... Mm. Letting the woman shine through whatever it is that she decides to wear. Right. So we have this beautiful one on the screen. Uh, you can tell us the inspiration behind <laughs> this one. I think this dress has really trended. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's one of your favorite uh, pieces. It's so beautiful. Tell us, tell us about it. Um, so the original design actually was white. Mm. And I was looking for something that you could wear to a day party. Okay. Like if you've got that last minute invitation to a day party and you... You just want to come off as not doing too much. But I realized it's such a lie because mm. I always do big sleeves. I don't know why I am yeah, so connected do. to big sleeves. Mm -hmm. That was the inspiration. And then it's, a, it's such an easy dress. You could actually wear it as a coat. So it has a zipper in front. Okay. You just, you know, you just pop it on, put on the zipper. If you want, you can put on the belt or don't put on the belt. Mm. You know what I love about you? Anytime I see you, you don't wear any other piece but than Belodu. I wear other pieces. All the time. I wear always in Belodu. All the time. All the time. <laughs> and I uh, actually <laughs> attend church with her. She's always in Belodu. I'm like, you know. Well. Yeah, and let's talk about this particular one. Uh -huh. This is also beautiful. Thank uh, you. Where should we wear something like this to? Um, to a black tie event. Mm. You could wear this to a black tie event, a dinner party, end of year dinner party at work. Or somebody's throwing, you know, 50th birthday bash, mm -hmm. 40th birthday mm -hmm. bash. You can wear that too. Um, yeah, I like things that are very... So this looks very unassuming. Right. But then it accentuates the woman's body in all the right places. And like I said, you just don't do too much. Mm. Um, we don't wear... We don't design a lot of fitted clothes. We do fitted clothes. But, not but sometimes, too yes. Like, you know, just be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Just let the dress help you be the best that you can be in any setting. Right. Yeah. And one thing about your dresses or your pieces are that you don't need too much accessories no. to, to, to come out looking no. beautiful. But you hardly wear earrings as well. I never. noticed that. I you never. never wear earrings. Never. My yeah. mom would die. <laughs> <laughs> my mom you and my aunt would die. Earrings. Yeah. No, um, that's just like I always say, I dress according to how I feel. Yeah. I'm very minimal when it comes to jewelry and mm. I'm very minimal in a lot of things. Sometimes I'll go through moments where I want to be decked out in jewelry all right. over. But then it's, it's not as often as it is. And like I say, I always want dresses to just serve, you know, let, let it do the talking. Let it do the talking. Let it do the talking. And your pieces always do. Let's talk about some of the challenges, mm -hmm. you know, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. especially in the fashion world. Yeah. Tell us. Okay. Um, people like to think the first challenge is money. Mm. The first challenge is the money. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Um, access to finance. We've come a long way as a country, right. but now, now the financial institutions are helping with that. And I don't think that is even the problem. Um, my biggest challenge would be finding the right talent to work with. Mm. Um, right talent could be in, even in the technical bit, 
or even in the admin bit. Right. So for a business like fashion, what people don't understand is we actually un here we actually underestimate the various talents that come together. You need someone in marketing. You mm -hmm. need someone who's good with admin. Just to make sure you have everything planned. You need a right. good accountant. Mm -hmm. Then, I, then you come to the technical. You need a pattern cutter. You need a seamstress. You need a tailor. You need um, someone who's just you know managing quality control. Right. Finding that right talent and working with them is such a hassle. Um, and being loyal as well. Um, well, do you find loyalists? That is never a problem for me because we are all here to serve a purpose. So everybody has a self right. self interest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't have anything against that, but then if you're going to join my team, you have to understand that there's a, there's a mood and a way of doing things. Right. So once we understand each other, we're good. Mm. If you come and tell me I can only dedicate one year of my life to this role because I have my own ambitions, I think I'd actually prefer that. Right. And then we can work and do the best that we can for each other within that period. Mm -hmm. It's um, people not understanding or people... Like I said, if money is just your motivation, yeah. it becomes such a short-lived process because then you're never satisfied, so you keep on hopping. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's where your issue of our loyalty comes in. Yeah. But like I said, if, you, if you're straight up, there isn't the any passion. issue. Yes. The passion. The for passion you. for whatever mm. it is that you're doing. Mm. So if you want to be a quality control person in fashion, just be passionate about it. Right. Yeah. You have a lot of values. Let's talk a bit about some of your values because <laughs> I saw your values and I'm like, wow, that, no wonder she's going far. <laughs> Tell <laughs> us your you. values. Um, we're guided, personally I'm guided by certain values which I have translated into my business and it actually helps us from the design process right through to um, serving our clients. So we make sure we're guided by those principles. So when you ask about, when you ask about, we don't do a lot of color, sometimes mm. we do color and we have this value which we call joie de vivre, which means okay. the joy of living. So that's when we show our playful side, we do that with our big, so the the big, dress, like you say, the big sleeves, right. just to show our playful side. Our latest collection, we had some vibrant colours like purple and orange to show off that side. Okay. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this. Thank you. This is beautiful. Thank you. Right. So is this your latest collection? Oh, we have some certain pieces that we call our basics. Okay. So they run through each year. We just keep on changing the colours based on what our clients are telling us. Okay. So this is called the Katie Kimono. Mm -hmm. Out of our... Most popular style called the KT is a shorter version of this. Okay. So this kimono can serve as um, a cover-up for your swimwear, a cover-up for your everyday wear, or even your evening gown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a multifunctional piece. Mm. That's what we like. You know, one thing about your pieces, again, uh, like I said, they are timeless and they are classy. Thank you. Super classy. Thank you. How do you get it? How do you make your things so classy? Because I think I understand. Mm. I understand the woman. And don't get me wrong. I started designing from a very selfish point of view. So it's to serve myself. And then I realized there are a lot of people who are on the same wavelength as me. So it's quite easy. When I understand knowing the woman I'm designing for mm -hmm. and knowing what she's looking for at any point in her life. Right. So that's what makes it easy. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really lovely. So these are some of your pieces on the runway. Yes, this is the latest collection which we um, showcased in Portugal okay. um, in March. Okay. Now let's talk about how you got onto the international market. How did it all start? <laughs> <laughs> how did I even get here? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> so um, I think with anything, when you just bury your head in your work and you do, you do things the right way, you get noticed without even you realizing the strides that you're making. So... Um, how do we go on Portugal um, Fashion Week? Mm. There, there's a platform called Canex by Afri Exim Bank, which belongs to the African Development Bank, and they are, they have a fund where they are supporting creatives in the African on the African continent and the Caribbean. I saw the link to apply. They started last year October. Okay. So they do two presentations, March and in October. Saw the link to apply, and I put in a, an application and. Maybe four weeks into the application, I got an email saying, congratulations, you were selected, oh. which came as a shock. Because it's just one of those things like, oh, I've just seen something. Let me just quickly put in an application and see where this will lead to. And then when it came in, in no time, uh -huh. in no time, we had to um, put together, finish our collection that we we're putting together for the show. Wow. And what's the feedback like? Oh my God, the feedback was awesome. I love the pink <laughs> one. So I told you, we have our playful side. Oh, yes, side. you do. Yes, you do. We have our playful side. So this is um, 
from party edit okay. now leading to christmas we do what we call a party edit so it comes out maybe around october just to help people put together like a party wardrobe for the season okay yeah so that's from that from the last so how come you didn't edit. bring me one of your dresses you didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't I'll know my do size. Better. I'll do you better. Do better. I'll, I'll so do now better. you owe me one of your dresses. Please come Definitely. by the studio. I will. Come by the uh, studio. So you were telling me the feedback after after the runway show. Yes, the feedback um, was tremendous. We got a lot of support. Um, we got a lot of um, international stockers also looking in. Mm -hmm. So that's my dress. Okay. That's yes. what I'm wearing now. <laughs> oh, same yeah, thing. Same okay. Thing. Right. So we've got a lot of um, stockers, you know, interested in and stocking below do wherever they are. It was just, it was an insightful platform to be on. We learned so much and then just the exposure, like I said, sometimes you get so buried in your work, you really mm. don't realize that you're actually, you know, influencing people in a very subtle way or getting the attention of the right teams and mm. the right platforms. Do you do bridal wars? Yes, we do. Okay. But unfortunately, uh, you know, I don't put a lot of things out there. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think I saw a collection correct. of uh, yours for some bridesmaids. They were beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank beautiful. You. Thank That's you. why I asked you if you yes, do bridal wars. But we, we do. don't see most of your bridal wars being because showcased. Because usually what we do, we do it directly for the client. Okay. And so we don't do a lot of um, publicity with it once we give it to the client. All right. Yeah. So it's just for the client and that's and it. And then that's it. So it's special though. If you're not special, you can't get it. Oh, no. <laughs> anybody who walks through our doors, okay. anybody who inquires I is special. I love as well. Thank you. The, the color combination yes. is beautiful. Yes. Do you Thank have you. to pay a lot uh, to have these models walk the runway? No, 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 I don't have to pay for anything. Really? No. <laughs> I don't have to pay for anything. I was selected. It was like a committee selecting brands from africa i didn't have to i can pay. imagine how you felt listen Ugh. the the experience when i came back the experience from that show i didn't lift a finger all i had to do was design my pieces and even a week into going to portugal i told one of the consultants like oh i hate my collection i don't like any of the pieces mm. and he was like what send me some pictures let me have a look just tell me you have nothing to worry about literally all i had to do was pack up the pieces mm -hmm. fly to Portugal got there the team was responsible they took it to the event center the models were there um, they helped me select the models for each piece which piece I'll put on which right. model mm -hmm. shoe selection makeup I did nothing this is like dream come true yes I did nothing dream come true yeah. Alima what should we expect from you in the next few years to mm. come that's a lot expect a lot uh, mm. we have a lot of things lined up um, back to finding the right talent, the issue of finding the right talent. Um, we're looking to develop like an apprenticeship program. Okay. Not for just the production or the technical bit, but even from the front of office, from sales, marketing, running a program where we can introduce young people who finish school or anybody, not necessarily in the fashion industry, but you want to be in the creative industry and you just want to, you know, get some real life experience. Mm -hmm. We want to um, bring people in over a certain period, six months, a year, where you learn, you're learning on the job, you're working and still learning on the job, and then afterwards you can walk away with a certificate. Okay. And if you want to pursue working with other brands or other companies, it's easier for you, or if you want to set up your own company, then you know you've walked away with some experience that you can actually apply. Right. So that's on one aspect. The other aspect, we are also looking to make sure that we're internationally seen and work with more stockers to get Belodu out of Ghana and then put that on the map. Definitely. Yeah. I want people at home to get into the, this conversation because mm -hmm. you know what? When it comes to fashion, I know people say, we want to be a part of the conversation. The time is now. So the number is on the screen. Just mm. do call us. Talk to Alima. If you have any questions, she's here. She'll answer your questions. If you want to purchase uh, some of her beautiful pieces, <laughs> she's here as well. You do delivery. Yes, we do. Worldwide? Yeah. Okay. Worldwide. Worldwide. Mm -hmm. So you heard. Alima does worldwide. So do call us and ask her any questions of your choice. But you were telling us about your values. You didn't finish. I know. Yes, I didn't finish the values. Yes. So the very first value is passion. Like I said, I, this was birthed out of passion. And we translate that passion in, into what, what we are creating. Just make sure that we are doing it well to serve a purpose. Um, we're passionate when we're serving uh, our women mm -hmm. and listening to them and getting feedback. We work a lot with feedback, mm. and I like to always tell my team, just call, follow up. Let's find out what's happening. Let's talk to our woman. Um, 
Another value is timelessness. Mm. So you'll find out some of our pieces, or you even find people who've worn our pieces for maybe five, six years, because it doesn't stay within a certain time frame. Yeah. If you get a piece from us today, trust me, in two or three years, you can still put it on, not mm -hmm. feel like you're outdated. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we, we would like to think of ourselves as an empowering brand, we work with empowering women. So we empower women by sourcing locally from um, women-owned businesses. Okay. Our workforce, we're about 80% women-led. And then third-party factories that I work with are also owned by women. Oh. So, and that's my way of empowering or giving back to society because we all know once you empower women and you also engage with the youth, mm. then we are helping develop the country. Right. And I like to think our pieces are also functional. Um, nothing goes to waste. Mm. So aside whatever you've ordered, serving a purpose in your wardrobe, it's also functional. We're, we're, not, we're not over the top with our designs. Mm -hmm. um, we're functional and also making sure that our fabric off cuts, we use them in house. So we use whatever is left of the fabric to make belts. We use it for making oh. our packaging. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. Are you going to bags now? Yes, we do, oh. we do, some, we do some really cute tote cute. bags. I, I, yes. I think we'll show, we'll show a few of your bags. <laughs> but tell us a bit about some of these, co these collections. So this is the KT dress, which is okay. the popular our most popular item. I think every Balodu woman has this. Right. It's such a good everyday wear, and it's so good to pop on. We know when you're late for, like, mm -hmm. you know, going shopping on a Saturday, or during the week you're late for a meeting, you can just quickly put it put on. on. Right. And, and this? this um, yes. is a collection from last year, about a year ago, and we worked with the duo, mm. another woman-owned business. They were cousins, actually, in the tie-dye. Okay. So we actually worked with them in creating this Oh, so this is tie and dye? It's, yeah, in this subtle oh, wow. design for us. Yes, same tie dye. I, yeah. I would never have known. Yeah. Wow. What about this one? I love this. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah. I think I'm just loving it. <laughs> this is beautiful. Thank you. So, this was from last year, our vacation edit. So, mm. um, between March and March and May, when we do our collection, we always make sure we have like holiday pieces mm -hmm. that people can travel with. Right. So this comes from that. Right. Okay. And then which other one are we talking about? Look, uh, can we see the next one, please? Yes, oh, this one. Same collection. Yes. So same, same collection. tie dye, same collection. Right. Okay. All right. So these are beautiful. I must say, um, I can't wait to wear your pieces. Uh, beautiful pieces. Thank Alima you. has got there, and of course, Alima's bag is here as well. <laughs> this is one one of your lovely pieces coming out. Uh, yeah. This this is a bag. So, what's the inspiration behind this bag? Is that an inspiration? Um, just a practical. So, the original bag design was a bigger tote. Okay. So, like every day, totally, you could put your laptop in. You could put your makeup bag or everyday essentials. Then I thought, okay, maybe when, you, when the woman gets to her destination, she wouldn't want to carry that big bag. Mm. So I don't, why wouldn't we have like a, a very small one where she can just put in her phone, her lip gloss, maybe her powder and her brush, and then a burst of this one. Wow. So usually when I carry the big one, I pop this inside, and then when I get to where I'm going, I just take this one out. Oh, yeah. wow. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, that's Hello, bag. good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello? Oh, unfortunately, I think the line dropped. Please do call us. Uh, the, the bigger bag is on the screen. This is how it looks. Mm -hmm. Everything goes in there. Everything goes in there. And this is handmade by, I have this wonderful craftsman who's okay. all the way in my casino. Oh. So he makes these bags for me. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I have uh, Ima. Hi. You're calling from Kumasi. Yes, please. How are you? I'm pleased. I'm fine. Fantastic. Let's hear from you. Um, the, the this, this uh, Alima is very creative. I've never seen such a person before. Mm. Very, very nice person. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very creative. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for promoting such people. God bless you, Joy Prime, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so you can also do call and uh, talk to Alima. She's right here with us. I'm loving her bag, I must say. <laughs> uh, it felt like it. it it's woven, right? It's woven. So we've got these tiny straps, and I got him to weave weave it and then sew it on 
another thing before making the bag. Right. Do you have it in colors or is it just black for um, now? For now, we have this in just black. Okay. And then we have it in other colors, but they're not in the woven pattern. Okay. You can get it in the brown, but that's it's not woven. The okay. woven pattern is only in black. But it's all now. fabric? Yeah. I mean, this is creativity at this best, and I'll buy this bag any day, any time. Thank Trust you. me. This this is just beautiful. It's Thank you. beautiful. Anyway, Alima, so tell us uh, if somebody wants to get your pieces, where can the person get it from? Um, you can get in touch with us on Instagram. We, we respond to DMs. Mm -hmm. Send us a DM, we'll respond. Okay. So when you go on our page, we we'll do on Instagram. Our numbers are there. You can send us a message via WhatsApp or even just send us a DM and somebody will be quick enough to respond, respond. and carry on the conversation. Our uh, studio is also in East Ligon, so if you're in Accra and you want to visit the studio and have an in-person experience, right. we're encouraged that. And then we also have an e-com, so a website. Okay. You can go onto the website All and right. um, look at the pieces and place your order. Okay, I have another caller on the line. Hello, good morning, Florence. Hello, how good are morning. You? Please, I'm interested, interested in your bag. So how do I get one? I'm calling from Tumu. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alima. Hi, Florence. <laughs> You can send us a DM on Instagram, and okay. and someone will be will respond immediately and assist you in getting your bag into home. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So the I told you the bag is, is mm. just just beautiful. Thank you. So somebody is asking, mm -hmm. okay, and a person is sitting behind the television set at home and saying, "What will Alima make pieces for men?" <laughs> <laughs> I get asked that all, all the time. <laughs> I get asked that all the time. I would love, I mean, I'll never say never, mm. but I feel like um, I, my answer always is, let me just streamline this system. Let it be as automatic as it can be. Okay. And then I can bring it, I can bring an additional line, but mm. definitely never say never. Never say never. The skirt yeah. is yours as well? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, that's um, the, the bag. Suit, the play suit. Yes. The play suit with the bag. Yes. That's nice. Thank you. I need Alima to the world. Hey, <laughs> but what about your colleague who uh, went away? Didn't she get offended that you carried on the name Edu? Oh, no, she didn't get offended. We're still on good terms. We're still friends. Um, it is what it is. Mm. Um, it's a business name. What, what can I do? What can you do? Yeah. If at some point we feel like dropping the name, we will. But then at that time when it happened, it was just too early. Is she taking proceeds? No. No. Wow, mm. that's a good person. I have another caller. <laughs> Hello, good morning, Adelaide. Good morning. You're How coming are you? from Adenta. How are you? Good, thanks. Fantastic. Um, I ju I'm just watching the telly, and I just bump into Alima Fashion. Okay. <laughs> and I'm interested. I like full gowns and stuff like that. Okay. So you want to get in touch with her, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure. She will definitely uh, leave her contact before she leaves here. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Hello, good morning, Comfort. Good morning. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Great, let's hear from you. Um, please, I want to say that um, I love her creativity. Mm -hmm. It's oh, kind you. of someone who, I, I don't know her, but I kind of want to look up to her for what she, she's doing. And actually, I think I'm inspired by her work. Oh, thank you. So I think she should keep it up. She definitely will, Comfort. Thank you so much for calling. And you at home can also call and encourage Alima. Uh, if you have any questions, she's here. But she says she has a program coming up. Yes, you said you were going to roll out something for yes. people out there. Yes, Let's yes. talk about her again. Okay. Because mm. I know people I, I know people want to be with you. They want to work with you. They want to be a part of this project. They should come. Yes. They should come. Um, everyone is invited. Like I said, so long as you have a... You have an interest in it. We're more, I'm more than willing to share what I do know, and then obviously even add add more. Add more. Alima, you're making bags now. Are we going to see shoes anytime soon? Definitely. At some Definitely. Point. I thought as much. Yes. At so are we going point. to uh, see yellow bottoms or green bottoms or which? <laughs> Which color bottoms are we going for? We don't know yet, but then definitely whatever you see will be very distinctive. You right. know that it's from Bello Adu. Right. Yeah. I, I know you'll definitely go into shoes yes, because your, your, your pieces are beautiful. Thank you. Are we going to have fabric fabric shoes? It could be anything. It could be anything. It could be anything. Mm. So long as we just listen to what the Bello Adu woman wants. Right. Yes. All right. I have Flores. Hi, Flores. Good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm great. Yourself? Fine. Thank you, Flores. Let's hear from you. Okay, um, 
Alima was my classmate at Holy Child. Oh, hey. And so I'm calling this morning to tell her that all the Hobson 99-year group, we're so proud of her. Oh, we're thank you. We're proud of where she's, she's taking Ghana to. Oh, thank and you. And we're looking forward to greater things to thank come you. in the in the future. Thank you. And thank you so much. And that will be storming her showroom very soon. <laughs> thank you. This warms my heart. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yes, your people are proud of you. Oh, thank you. Like yeah. you said, you really don't know mm -hmm. that you're actually affecting people yeah. this way because yes. you're just so buried in what you're doing at the moment. Right. But this is this is really nice. This is touching. Yeah. Thank you. We have Cynthia on the line. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Great. Let's hear from you. Please, I want to ask when will her course start or if it has started, how do I apply? Can you speak up a bit for me, please, Cynthia? I want to ask when will her course start. Her course, course, has it started? Oh, her course, okay. All right, okay, okay, all right, sure, Cynthia. Oh. Okay, Alima. It hasn't started yet. Um, we will definitely put it out there once we start. We're still trying to put it together. So once we start, we'll definitely put it out there. Mm. We'll put it on our social media page. We'll put it online and then people can have access to it. People can't wait to come to your fashion school. Yes. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it, a, I don't even have to call it a fashion school. Okay. I don't know, I don't know what we would call it, but then it's just, it's just going to be a place where we can all exchange ideas mm. and, you know, and share knowledge. Right. Yeah. So what is your new collection coming out? A new collection won't come out until September, October. Okay. But in between that time, we always do drops. So what we've done in March, we refresh with different colors okay. or we... We, you know, give it a different silhouette, like a, make it shorter, make it longer, reduce the arm length, stuff like that. And then a new collection actually comes out the last quarter of the year. Mm. Now, I told you we're going to talk about your sustainability plan. Yes. Tell Let's. us about it. Um, fashion as we know it, or the business of fashion and the way things are going in the world, if we don't do things differently... We are going to kill the environment. Right. Let me answer this last call and then we can talk about your... Okay. Uh, hello. Good morning, JT. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Let's hear from you. Sure. Um, I just want to say that um, I've been inspired by Bello Edu and what they are doing. And um, yes, I'm definitely looking forward to the men's stuff as well <laughs> when it does come on. But... Um, I was just wondering that is there any like any master class or any online um, you know classes or anything that some of us could take advantage of to learn from her and what she has available. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll give one more room. Hello. Good morning, Akosia. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Super blessed. Fantastic. Yourself? Right. Let's hear from you, Akosia. All right, um, you girls are looking so pretty this morning. Thank you. Thank you. I follow um, Bello on IG. I have few of her pieces. Oh. And um, she's doing amazing. Thank you. She's super, super amazing. Thank you. And I am proud of her. Oh, thank you. I am super proud of you, Bello. Thank I you. I am super proud of you. Thank you I know very you much. put in so much work, so your pieces do not come cheap. But then I'll ask. <laughs> Every Ghanaian <laughs> lady, or even the gentleman, maybe you can find your wife, mm -hmm. and his girlfriend, and all that. I mean, let's get her pieces. They are amazing. Tracy says hello. Says hello. Erica oh, also says you. hello. They all get your pieces, and we are all so excited to see you this morning. Oh, thank you. Bless. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, hmm. you got the goosebumps already. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I think I'll we'll come here every Monday. <laughs> To get my motivation. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. The viewers are so nice. This is so nice. Mm. To answer the question, I think this was called JT yeah. about masterclass. Yes. Um, so sometimes, I don't know if you've ever suffered from imposter syndrome. Mm. So I don't like to put things out there like I'm doing a masterclass. I'm like, okay, what do I know that right. I am going to put myself out there? But then I do know when young brands and mm -hmm. people contact me, I have all the time in the world to share what I want, like what I know, and yeah. then also answer questions. So he can definitely send us um, a message and we will definitely get back to him. And then once we put together our center and our learning um, apprenticeship program, we will also let him know. Right. Now, back to sustainability. Yes. 
um, like I said, if we continue to do things the way that we're going, as an industry, we were just going to destroy the earth. And um, for us, like I said, we don't waste fabrics. So whatever's left of this fabric, mm -hmm. we do a dust bag for our totes. Um, we do these tiny things also mm -hmm. that we put into the bags that you can drop your stuff in. Right. Um, that's our way of helping the environment to avoid waste. Another way that we think or we know that we practice is we pay all our workers above a living wage. Okay. So we pay more than what the standard of um, what the standard is, just to make sure we, we're helping. To, you know, we're making life comfortable mm -hmm. for the people that work with us. Let's reduce poverty. Yes, exactly. Um, I like to work with the youth and women-owned enterprises. So, for example, the gentleman who makes my bags mm. is all the way in my casino because he says he prefers to live there than to live in Accra. Okay. And then he also runs the center where he teaches young people how to make bags and accessories. So by giving him orders, I know I'm helping him maintain and grow his business. We source locally. We don't import our fabrics um, because we have all these women in Makola who bring in fabrics. Right. And if we're importing fabrics, who's going to be buying from them? So you buy from Makola? Yeah. We have supplies in Makola. Wow. I'm in Makola at least twice a month. I'm in Makola twice a month. I wouldn't have thought No, no, no. So. We, source, we source our fabrics locally. I 100%. We source our fabrics locally. We have supplies there that we work with. And it's just, you know, letting the money, you know, circulate, go in a cycle. Yeah. It's just circulate. So yeah. she's bringing in fabric. Why should I have to travel and go and bring in the fabric? I don't have to do that. She's done that work for me. Right. So when I go and I see pieces that I like, the fabrics that I like, I pick them up and then I, I can discuss what I also want in future and then and we help each other so she would the supplier would travel and mm -hmm. she would send pictures oh I found this would you be interested or I found this but then if I bring it this will be the price per meter and I'm like okay no regarding my price points there's a certain bracket I can't yeah. go over these are the things that we do that we know is making us sustainable mm. we're also working on other things in helping with the um, saving the environment and as we progress you will see alima thank you so much thank for being you. here today thank you we celebrate you thank i must you. say we honor you because what you're doing is beautiful thank you very much you are serving as an inspiration to a lot of people out there congratulations thank you, thank and you, thank you very you for much for being here thank you your final words before you leave alima hmm. do you think i'm some sort of sage let me see <laughs> uh, i think to anybody who's watching or listening embarking on anything or not embarking on anything i think i'll say just live your truth yeah just live, your truth. Say, just live your truth your social media handles alima Bello Edu. yeah yes and all the right details are there right yeah. and if you dm Bello Edu, we will respond, respond. Yeah. so it's not about putting out the number no there's a number there so you, okay. i can give out the number yeah, as please well give the number zero five four four Nine one nine five three zero. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank you so much for being Thank here today. Too. We are super happy and grateful. Thank I'll be wearing you. one of your pieces tomorrow. Please come over. And I'll, I'll put it on screen. I'll say <laughs> I'm wearing Bello and Do. Come over. Which one will you give to me? Which one will you recommend? You would have to come and select. Okay. There's I'll so be many there. things to choose from. I'll be there. Text me. I'll be there. Text me. <laughs> Thank All you. All right. Thank you so much for watching Thank the you. show today. Enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Rosalind Feli.